The Arusha bus terminus is as busy as any. But over the past few months, things have become even more crowded. A new bus route has opened up to a destination that even Tanzanians themselves hadn't heard of. Today though, the Ngorongoro Loliondo route taking passengers north of Arusha is by far the most popular here. 44-year-old Ibrahim Ahmed Kapiendo knows this very well. He's a ticket clerk here. Yeah. Yeah. But brisk but business, brisk business isn't his, isn't his reason for his, for his belief in this route, this route and, who it, and who it leads to. Behind his Behind eyes lies a testimony, lie a testimony that, is being that is being told and retold re throughout, throughout Tanzania. 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 Until the 5th of March this year, Ibrahim was suffering from glaucoma, a degenerative eye disorder which eventually causes blindness. So he booked himself a ticket to Loliondo. The man he's referring to as Babu is 76-year-old Ambilikile Mwasapile. And over the past few months, Tanzanian people have been inundated with stories of the man and a miracle cure for all chronic diseases known to man. The tale of this septuagenarian from Loliondo is quickly becoming legend. Thousands have trooped to Loliondo, some dying along the way, in a pilgrimage that even few here could have comprehended just a year ago. We decided to go and see for ourselves. At Namanga, the border town straddling Kenya and Tanzania, we only needed to get out of our car for people to mob us, volunteering stories about Mwasapile and his lure. The people here advised us not to go through Arusha northward to Loliondo, but instead go through Magadi into Tanzania. It is, according to them, the better route to Loliondo. And so our journey began. And before long, we found that the route we were advised to take wasn't exactly smooth. But we weren't the only ones taking this trip. Right from the outskirts of Magadi, <laughs> Nearly every car we met was headed to or from Loliondo on this pilgrimage of faith. The journey itself is a test of faith. Taking you from the marshes of Shompole, across rivers in Pinyin, the southernmost point right at the border between Kenya and northern Tanzania, and along the shores of Lake Natron. It's a 300 kilometer ride that is not easy to get through as we found out. And we weren't carrying any sick people. As we drew closer though, the toll from a punishing road began to manifest itself. Cars broken down in the most remote of places, hundreds of kilometers from help. After close to seven hours of travel, we were there, or at least we thought so. So shocking is the abruptness of, from what I could judge, a seven kilometer traffic jam snaking through the middle of nowhere, that all you can do is look. Men and women and children of all ages, weary but heartened by the fact that they finally have reached the promised land, trooping slowly towards the head of this jam. An open-air waiting room full of patients suffering from all ailments, waiting to see just one man. It seemed an impossible task for any man from what I could tell. 
Scale doesn't even begin to describe what we've seen here in Samunge. Hundreds of cars parked along this road here, entering to where the doctor is treating people. Thousands of people sleeping in the bush if they have to, all waiting for their turn very patiently to see him. Now the only area that we've seen selling traditional medicine, and by traditional I mean Western medicine, is a small dispensary up the road, has absolutely no business. Well, if Babu, as they call him, is an actual faith healer, then as you can see, He's got a lot of followers. We had barely taken all of this in when we heard a throbbing sound from above us. A helicopter rising from the pit of the Mwegaro hills ahead of us. We had heard tales of extremely rich invalids being flown here to drink the concoction. We soon would hear the tale of this helicopter and its occupants. When, uh, when I was here waiting on a queue, uh, I saw one helicopter come with the person who actually was suffering with uh, diabetes for about 20 years. So they carry him on a stretch um, as they gave him uh, the first priority because it was really an, um, serious. And um, once he drank the cup of this uh, medicine from Babu, the man started talking and he confessed himself that uh, he was suffering for about 20 years. After convincing the patients that we were only here as reporters and not patients, we got to the front of the line, where we were confronted with an image that both confirms the faith that the people here have in this drink and the desperation that walks hand in hand with this belief. <laughs> the old man you see here is Ambilikile Mwasapile, the man he's attending to can't speak or drink the liquid for himself. The catheter in his throat, a clear sign of what his handlers say he is suffering from. He has throat cancer. The medicine has to be administered through a tube in his stomach. He was whisked away soon afterwards. We were unable to confirm his condition, although it was claimed that he seemed to have regained full consciousness after being given the drink. Evening quickly sets in, and under a small tent, Ambilikile, or Babu as he is called, sits pouring this green liquid into cups. They're quickly taken to cars with keen occupants waiting. Money changes hands. The drink costs 500 Tanzanian shillings, approximately 25 Kenyan shillings. Children get half a cup, which sometimes is more than they want or can handle. The pace at which the medicine is doled out is frenetic, but it's done with such precision of hands that have practiced this before over three or four months. Babu pouring the medicine into cups and then distributing them to cars and to people here, all of whom through prayer, through faith, are all hoping to be healed. Of the thousands that are here, many are women and children. Yusta Isante has come here with her three children all the way from Arusha. Soon though, Soon the, medicine, the medicine runs out. Runs out. And a weary Ambilikile is led back to his house for the night. Undeterred, the multitude of the hopeful begin to bed down for the night, many of them under the stars. The following morning, we get to talk to the man at the center of this pilgrimage and speak to the legion of believers and the very few critics. For those who have come, all of those who have come, they still test positive. Of the man and a drink that is now becoming known as the wonder of Loliondo. John Alanamu, NTV, Samunge, Loliondo, Northern Tanzania. It's 6.30 in the morning. The mist from the Mwegaro Hills rolls down here in Samunge, Loliondo. But down below, an air of quiet expectation hangs here this early morning. 
the night before ambilikile mwasapile's medicine ran out but today ambilikile's helpers seem up to the task despite the fact that overnight the seven kilometer stretch of traffic to this place grew to 12 kilometers out of the paltry 500 Tanzanian shillings that is paid for the supposed cure, 200 shillings or 10 Kenyan shillings goes to the Lutheran church, another 200 shillings goes to paying Babu's workers and 100 or 5 Kenyan shillings goes to the man himself. It is claimed that Ambilikila spends the amount on supplies needed to prepare this concoction. This small mud-walled house is Ambilikila's home, not the palatial mansion that many would have expected of a man so famous here. It's approaching 7 o'clock and Ambilikila Mwasapile emerges. Immediately you can see how highly regarded and well protected he is. Security officers from the Tanzanian government's paramilitary unit the field force unit guard him. We've been asked to try and catch him before he begins working, but there are too many people to serve today, so we miss that opportunity. As he approaches the crowd, we're told that the chance to talk to Ambilikile will present itself again, albeit not in the manner that we had expected. Every morning before he begins doling out his medicine, he addresses the crowd that gathers in front of him. Here, he retells a story about how he came about the medicine first. Then, what it treats. On HIV, Ambilikila claims that after the seven days, a further three to four weeks may be needed before the virus clears out of one system and the person tests negative. Then, how it works? Then he does something unexpected. He asks the crowd to question him about his medicine. We ask our own. First, whether this medicine can be served by anybody else and why he chose this most remote of places to do so. Then, whether it can prevent one from falling sick ever, as many tend to believe. Unauma kichwa meza panado, unauma tumbo meza dawa za tumbo, unauma maridi anenda hospital. Tujangbika bango maripo. Ambilikile then leads the crowd in prayer. Ni uponyaji wako, ndi unu umekua bango, ni naomba buwana, endele ya kutenda majabu. And before long, begins his work. As he works, we ask him what is inside this concoction. What is inside this drink is chips from the root of a tree called Mgamriaga. In English, these roots are from the poison arrow tree, scientific name Antarias toxicana, among the most poisonous plants in the world. 
the irony in its use here in Loliondo cannot be overstated. The plant has been taken to Dar es Salaam for testing by the Tanzanian Ministry of Health, but according to Dr. Richard Olenkapi, all they will do is confirm the same thing because there is one other ingredient that is crucial to the working of this concoction. Richard himself is a walking testimonial to the drink's alleged capabilities. At the front of the line is this old lady. She cannot speak and is too weak to support herself. Her children suspect that she has lung cancer. She's 82 years old. She takes a medicine and after a few hours we find her at her tent. Such are the testimonies that have grown this line even further, bringing people from far and wide. I was sick for two years and uh, fatigue, fatigueness, so chronically uh, tired. Only one, only one. Okay. Despite the prior beliefs in modern medicine. Among the now over 800 cars here is one that would be more in place plying the Nairobi Nyeri route. In it are seven hopeful ladies and gentlemen from Kenya, among the relatively few Kenyans who have heard about this drink so far. One challenge that even Babu cannot cope with is the constant flow of people who make it here through varied means. Standing at the foot of the Mwigaro Hills, one gets an even clearer perspective of just how many people have put their faith in Ambilikile Mwasipile or Babu and the drink that he's offering them. A multitude of human and vehicular traffic stretching back further than my eyes can see, about 15 kilometers all the way to his doorstep for just one drink. Now feeding and housing such a multitude takes quite a bit of skill and willpower, something that Tanzanian businessmen seem up to the task of doing. From tents, to tires, to water, <laughs> Samunge has become a circus of sorts, full of vendors pining to profit from the pockets of the hopeful here. All the while, having drunk from these people's proverbial cup of life as well. Transport to Loliondo as well has become quite the business. A seat in one of these land cruisers costs up to 120,000 Tanzanian shillings or 6,000 Kenyan shillings. That is 240 times the amount of money it costs to get one cup of Ambilikile's concoction. Nonetheless, people here look at it as a savings in medical bills. <laughs> St. Thomas Hospital at the center of Arusha used to serve very many people. Now lines around the hospital have disappeared. Dr. Julius Mbuya denies that this has ever happened but acknowledges that many a patient of his have been to see He's Babu in instead. Okay. Some of the patients who were not treated by me just came here and they told me, Doctor, I'm diabetic. I need to check my, my blood sugar status. And when the blood sugar results come, they're quite high. 
they kind of get a shock because it is something they never expected. They were supposed, they were expected to be told your blood sugar is, is normal. I'm talking about the patients who I've seen. So if they are, the blood sugar is high, I tell them, your blood sugar is high. Have you been to Loliondo? Some would admit, yes, I've been there. In the multitude, we're told many are HIV positive, all hopeful that they will get cured. After all, Ambilikila's first patient was allegedly HIV positive. Naposema na evidence, kama daktari na mtu ambaye alikuwa amepata HIV AIDS na mume wake amefariki na yeye ameanza yeye RV. Lakini baada ya kupewa dawa ya mchungaji, amepimwa ni negative. But from what Dr. Mbuya has seen, this isn't true for people with AIDS or diabetes. I have some HIV patients who are in the ward. They came back because they stopped taking the ARVs. They come back, they came back quite sick. The government allegedly knows this as well. Arusha's regional medical officer, Dr. Salash Ture, a severe critic of Ambilikilas, however says that despite a general concurrence by doctors in government that the medicine doesn't work. They say they, it can cure all the chronic diseases. I don't believe on that at all. It has to facilitate people going there for a number of reasons. That belief has nothing to do with the government. Yeah, that would be an individual belief. And government presence is needed there. The rainy season has begun and hundreds are stranded under the skies. In fact, even from the safety of one's car, the rain could still be an impediment as we found out. As if the adventure of getting to Samunge wasn't hard enough, now we have to deal with this and we're leaving. Downstream there's about maybe 500 cars, maybe you can see them over the ridge over there, that are going to be blocked off by this river that has been caused by the rains that have been here for the past two days. Nonetheless, the cream of Tanzanian society, including politicians, are going to Samunge. With some allegedly taking their constituents there in order to gain popularity. As we leave, we begin to count the number of cars in a line waiting to see Ambilikile. There were nearly 2,000 cars parked on a road, with more still coming. Whether the government or critics like it or not, the pilgrimage to Loliondo is only getting bigger. Now we're nearing the tail of this snake of humanity and traffic whose head is buried somewhere there close to those hills. And over the past three days, we've tried to explain to ourselves what is happening here. And we can't quite seem to get the perfect expression of what we've seen because we don't know whether it's gullibility, we don't know whether it's blind faith, we don't know whether it's desperation even. But perhaps the one thing we haven't thought about in these past three days here in Samunge is the fact that maybe everyone needs a little hope. And that's why everyone has trooped here to get a cup of medicine from Babu. John Alanamu, NTV, Samunge, Loliondo, Northern Tanzania.